the other consideration to keep in mind is that uh, you know the, the, the main the basic the central feature in RLS the central feature in causing RLS is a decrease in brain iron not in serum iron as many people tend erroneously to think but in brain iron um, so there is a lack of iron in the main iron stores in the brain the main one is the substantia nigra the uh, the way we have to increase that iron in the brain is by administration of intravenous iron however the response rate to intravenous iron is a uh, usually of around 60 70 percent of the patients by by far not 100 percent so there is still a percentage of patients that are treatment resistant whenever we administer them intravenous iron the question is why um, a new diagnostic technique a very simple diagnostic technique might might help in in, in that regard uh, first data on uh, um, on evaluation of the main brain iron store of the yeah in the central nervous system, which is the substantia nigra, uh, evaluation by means of a transcranial um, a transcranial sonography, which is a very simple, relatively inexpensive, uh, harmless technique, might give us a good picture of how much iron there is in the brain you know the main problem we had so far is that we can measure iron periphery but how can we measure iron within the brain uh, it's very difficult either you have to do a very sophisticated kind of MRIs or uh, you can also do spinal taps which is very invasive uh, you can do this on a on a you know on a, on a routinary basis however if you use a uh, transcranial sonography which is something that is normally being done in 10 minutes it's relatively inexpensive um, many hospitals many pra neurological practices have that you can picture the echogenicity of the substantia nigra and that will predict to what extent these patients respond to oral iron we know that those that have a, a lower echogenicity are the ones that respond more so that allows you to to select the kind of patients that you want to treat with uh, with intravenous iron